Hey Rockstars, welcome to April and the Iberian Lakes inside the Orophil Color Builders Endangered Species Block of the Month. My name is Holly, a Knight of String and Story, and I'm so excited to be with you again this month discussing quilting plans. And specifically this month, we're going to discuss choosing thread colors, changing thread colors, and burying our threads. Because if we're using multiple thread colors or doing anything complicated, with our quilting, we're likely going to end up with thread tails in the middle of our quilt block. So what I've done here is I've actually taken this month's threads out of the box. A quick little note, as you can already tell, none of these threads are going to identically match our background. We will have this thread, um, a matching orange, coming up in an upcoming color builders box. So those of you who are waiting to quilt your blocks, if you want an exact match to your background, that will be an option. Um, but I'm quilting as we go, so we're going to talk about which of these colors I plan to use on the background and on the links and why. So anytime I am choosing colors for a project, I like to narrow down my choices to just a few and ideally not tangle my thread as I'm pulling it off the spool. There we go. Um, I like to narrow it down to just a few options and lay them out across my quilt like so. I will literally lay them end to end um, on a quilt this small so that I can really get a feel for how the color plays across multiple points on the project. Sometimes I have a pretty good idea of what color thread I want to reach for. Uh, Orifil 2600 from our very first box is a go-to for me, uh, that dove gray color. Um, but sometimes I try, even when I think I know what I want, to put myself through this exercise because it's a good opportunity to see what blends and what doesn't. All right, now, as always, we have a dark, medium, and light tone uh, coming out of our thread box this week that I've, or this month that I've lined up here. And we can see them stretched across the quilt. Now, even from the brief distance between y'all behind the camera and the quilt, it can be a little bit difficult to see this. But um, we've got our darkest color here. It blends well across, I mean, really, even though these are not the same uh, kind of colors as this background, this fine 40 weight thread, blends in pretty quickly quickly and it has some nice warm tones all right all of these of course blend well across our links because all three of these shades are represented at a quick glance though my inclination is to use the lightest color here on my links and to use this medium color for my background um, if i wanted to jazz it up a little bit i could also work the dark tone in but let me explain why these two are my top picks this middle tone is the warmest of these three colors, and thus it is the one that blends into this orange background the best. It is not an exact match, but I'm planning on doing square spirals for my background, and it will be close enough that it will just add a little bit of texture and visual interest, but not be too distracting. Either the light thread or the dark thread I feel like stands out too much, and I really don't want to be distracting from what's going on here in the center of my quilt. I'm choosing to use the lightest thread color on my links. Um, I'm going to do, I think, some McTavishing to really create some fluff and fur. And the reason for that is that it is gonna blend best across the majority of these colors. There's a lot of really light tones represented here in our links from this gray to these couple of different taupey colors. And same kind of thing on this, I really want the bold colors of the Lynx's eye, the ear, a few of these shadows to be the popping points. And I'm gonna let my quilting kind of melt to the background this month um, while also choosing complicated quilting motifs. So uh, last month with the turtle, we had a lot of open space around the turtle. I didn't do a lot of quilting on the turtle and I chose to have more stark contrasts of my thread to kind of zhuzh up that open background area um, because there wasn't a lot happening in terms of quilting on my turtle. I have the option of lots of quilting this month because we don't have as many small pieces. So I'm gonna opt for more texture contrast and texture play than color contrast. All right, I'm gonna get a bobbin wound and load it in my machine and then we will start stitching. Before I do that, as a quick reminder, make sure that you clean out your bobbin race and put a fresh needle in your machine. Those are things that it's easy for us to forget, but they can contribute to issues like thread breakages, needle breakages, and other issues while we're quilting. So just in case you haven't done those things recently, friendly reminder. All right, I'll see you under the machine in a second.
All right, rock stars, we have our whole quilt quilted here. And as you can see, uh, between quilting these two areas separately and with different colored threads, we have a few thread ends to bury. So let's talk about how we're gonna do that. The basic principle is we're gonna take a needle and we're gonna use this needle to take these threads down into the batting of our quilt and run it about a needle's length underneath the top of the quilt, inside the batting, and then back up so that we can trim the threads and kind of nudge the ends down into the batting and then we have a nice long tail secured inside the quilt. Now, there's two ways we can approach this. You can just thread this needle. This is a fairly large eye needle, not too bad, but we can also make a lasso out of just an extra piece of thread. So you can cut off, I don't know, six, eight inches, even a little bit less than that. And then you only have to thread this needle once in order to handle all of these tails. So get your end all smoothed out there thread it through, and then you truly just tie a knot in the end of this little lasso that we've made. And it's just a lot easier to loop threads through this than having to thread your needle three different times. I'm gonna trim this up just so it's a little bit tidier. From here, I'm going to put my tails from my quilting through this loop so it's threaded and attached to my needle, all right? Now, I did not choose to knot these threads. Uh, this is not a quilt that is gonna be used. It's gonna be a wall hanging. Um, just simply burying these threads will keep it plenty secure. If you want this even more secure though, you can tie a knot in those threads before doing this. Now, take the tip of your needle and put it into your quilt top right where those ends are coming out. And I like to do this kind of right along a seam because it gives me an easy place to follow. Notice that I have my fingers on the back of the quilt, making sure that nothing is poking through the back. We're gonna go about a needle's length underneath and then pull the lasso and those thread ends all the way through. Now you notice I had to give it a little tug there to get that knot through. Very carefully so you don't accidentally snag your quilt top. Trim those ends flush and then just give it a little rub to put the ends of your now buried threads down into the batting. You can see this becomes an invisible stopping point here. I'm gonna repeat the same with the other two thread tails and then our lovely little Iberian links will be all done.